So, past four days, I have been riddled with nightmares and have not got much sleep. But I knew I had to wait, and I wrote and painted and wrote and painted. I had to dig down deep to find I, this voice in me. There's always, always been this voice. But no matter how talented I became, how good of a job I did of whenever I found that confidence. There was this voice that told me I was arrogant, I was not worth shit, I was a white trash piece of shit that would never amount to nothing. After 30 some odd years, that voice, get off that keyboard, let me small. This voice has embraced me and done horrible things to me. I knew this time around I was going to find that voice in me. I didn't care what it took. And I found it. And at first, I had cried and cried and cried for the last few days. But, to write it, to get it down, I have to say, Get it out. Ramble and talk. Ramble and talk. The only one that can save you from yourself is you. When I was a kid, or uh, age anymore, I don't know. It seems like the magical age of eight years old to eleven years old is uh, all the bad shit happened. Mom and I, she finally found enough money that we found a decent apartment right on the edge of the ghetto in South Houston into a nice neighborhood. There was no furniture. There was nothing. We slept on the floor. And Mom was young. She, she did the best she could. But she was hardly around. And the roommate we had at that time was a horrible fucking man. Every day I... Well, let me... I was at a point where I just had one pair of jeans and one t-shirt. I was a stinky kid in school. And now we were in a nice school. I had to walk to this place and every day. These kids beat the shit out of me before I even got there. I even knew when I was terrified of rats from a story I wrote. In school trying to do good and they would bring rat traps on the way to school and throw them at me and then I would come home to a man who was such a horrible man and hated my mom and me so much that he would threaten me every night with a knife I peed on the toilet seat like little boys do and he would threaten to <laughs> cut off my taken balls he would get drunk, and I would sit in the dark room and pretend to be asleep as he stood in the doorway with that pocket knife and whittle and just stare at me. Mom was hardly ever home. But one time she did come home, and she did feel bad for being gone so long. She brought me a small turtle. And I love that fucking turtle. And then she was gone again. Working, doing whatever. And I came home one day. And I walked into the door and this man grabbed me by the fucking hair. And drugged me into the kitchen. Over to the sink. Where he had ran water in the sink. And there was my turtle. Swimming around, trying to get to the edge. And he took out his knife and put it right against my balls. 
and grabbed me stronger by the hair and pushed me to the sink and he said, I told you if you pissed on that sink again, I'd cut your balls off. Now you're going to learn. And he pulled the plug of the sink and turned on the garbage disposal. And I know I screamed and I screamed and I screamed. And this man held me down at the sink as I watched my turtle circle down the drain and heard the garbage disposal going until he went down and his guts hit me in the face. As this man held me there and I screamed and I pissed myself and I screamed more and I screamed more. And then he threw me against the wall and held me there by my throat and told me if I ever told my mom he would kill me and her. That man for months and I still had to live there after that and I didn't say a word to anyone. That man did something to me. Until now, I, I I didn't know what it was. It was a voice. It was a feeling. It was a haunt. Every I'm telling you these things now because what I've had told myself the last two days is who does that to a child? Who in the fuck puts their turtle in the garbage disposal and does that to a child? But then you hear about things today. Well, this is commonplace, and we are so busy, and so need to make money, or no, we need whatever, that we ignore it, and move on. And things just keep getting worse and worse. I want to heal from what that fucking man did to me. The way I do it is I tell stories told stories forever as a defense against what I have to deal with inside my head. And now I'm doing it. And I will tell the story in the book when it's ready. But right now, sitting here telling you this, I'm so fucking terrified again. And I feel so alone. Because I still hear that man's voice in my head. That man's music. And the voices right now in the world and the music in the world the same goddamn feeling, and that terrifies me. I don't know where I was going with this. But I do know this song has to be different. A song inside of me, where I do try to sing and make people happy. But there's a darkness there. And I wake up now screaming and wiping turtle guts off my face. We have to find a balance between our good and bad, our light and dark. We have to know that we're all in this together. Maybe that's what I want to say right now. Because we're all in this together. I don't know what kind of man it takes to hold a man, a child's head by a drain while he grinds up a boy's pet. I don't know what goes through people's heads to do that. That is an evil that I will truly never understand. But I believe things happen for a reason. And here I am crying, hoping people listen. And I hope I tell that story later on. And I hope to God, to whatever the Creator is out there, the higher force, that things find a balance in me people I know and the people that listen to me, my stories, my paintings. And I hope that music helps them become a little bit stronger and try to deal with all this evil.